Do 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 do. It is Monday and it is Ministry Monday. Hi, I'm Miss Val coming to you from my sewing room, and today is May 11th, the day after Mother's Day. How was your Mother's Day? If you want to comment and let me know, my Mother's Day was fine. It was quiet. Did some things around here. I don't think I sewed. But I said I wasn't going to sew on Saturday. I think I did, though. But um, So I do hope everybody had a great Mother's Day. And this, this Ministry Monday, what I'm going to talk about tonight is really important. It's probably the most important video that you'll ever watch in your life. This video is a video that will help you in the long run cope with many things, especially when it comes to death. Um, so it's very important to me to do this video to find out if any of you have soul insurance. So this is what I thought. I said, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on and I'm going to share all that I'm doing every day. But I'm also going to share how I did it when I was in county and when I was in prison. And I used to talk to a lot of girls every day, day in, day out. And you already know that. And um, hi, Luann. Hi, Michael. Uh, the, you can read the topic and you might get a just of what this video is about. But this will be the best video that you will ever watch in your life. And it's basically... Uh, what I told all the girls in county and in prison when I talked to them to share the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ with every one of them. Um, it's basically about soul insurance. And it blows my mind that people will pay all this money <clears throat> to have insurance on your house, on your cars. I mean, some things we have to have insurance on because it's law. But there's a lot of things that we get insurance on, and it costs a lot of money. We do it every day. There's people that get insurance on their jewelry. And if you're just joining us, I will recap the topic of this somewhere along the line. Thanks. I think that was Louie that did that. I don't know why. Um, Nancy says hi. So anyway, I don't want to get off track here, but we spend a lot of money on all these policies to take care of all of our materialistic things. And I would look at the girls, and one question I would ask them is, do you know where you're going when you die? I do. And so many of the girls would look at me and go, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just going to die. Hi, Tony, I knew you'd come on. Now listen, just read the caption. You already got soul insurance. I know you do, but... I'm talking about how I would talk to the girls in county and in prison and how I would share the gospel with them about their soul. <laughs> I dear. So what I would tell them is, do you want to know where you're going when you take your last breath? And almost every one of the girls said the same thing. Yes, Miss Val. And I said, well, you know, it's nice to hear that. I said, it's really easy. I said, you know, it's up to you. I said, it's a choice. I said, but, you know, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he says that, you know, he, whoever believes in me, though he, hi, Annie, though he die, yet shall he live. That's what Jesus tells you. If you accept him as your personal Savior, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you will not perish. You will not die. The one thing about Christianity is we serve a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. He's written about all through eternity in the books. The Bible is one of the biggest selling books in the world. And Jesus Christ is one of the biggest topics. And, you know, all the other people that have passed on are in the grave. Jesus Christ is the only one recorded to have been seen raised from the dead besides Lazarus, who Jesus raised um, in the Bible in the uh, New Testament. So basically what I would tell the girls is, you know, is 
soul insurance, the best thing about it is, and it blows my mind that people will pay all this money for their car, their houses, their jewelry. They'll get insurance on this. They'll get life insurance policies for when they die for people and everything else like that. But then I would look at the girls and I would say this. It's very important. What makes Annie, Annie, Tony, Tony, AJ, AJ, Michael and Luann who they are? What makes you you? Because if you lay me on a table and you lay you on a table, hi, Giancarlo, if you lay you on a table, if you open me up and you open you up, if they opened us up on the table, besides some anatomy, if you're a man or a woman, we all have the same things. A heart, blood, it's the blood that gives life. And we have hands and we all have eyes and we all have nose, but what makes you you? What makes me, me? Your soul. It's your spirit that lives within you. And as I was explaining this to them, they would go, you know, that makes sense, Miss Vale. Well, yes, it does. It makes perfect sense. And I said, your spirit, your soul is very important. And I work for JC Insurance Company. Jesus Christ Insurance Company. I said, and you know, I have a policy that I can offer to you that's free. You don't have to fill out a coverage selection form every year. You don't have to, you know, send this in every year. It's free. It's one and done. And that insurance policy, Christ is telling you that if you accept this, you will live eternity when you, in eternity when you take your last breath. And the best part about it is it was paid in full with the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood was shed for you and for me. So the policy is wonderful. I know you have your policy, Tony. I have mine too. It's free. So it blows my mind when I think about it. Why wouldn't anybody want to secure their soul? Ah, well, I don't believe it, you know. I don't, you know, it, it isn't true. Why would you want to take that chance with your soul? I don't understand that. You know, Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Again, I always say this, and I said it to the girls. If you think you were just born to die and do all this and so and, and look forward to nothing else, that's crazy because you're all born with, we're all born with a purpose. So it's free. Now, some people may not accept the policy, the soul insurance, because, hi, Melissa, they don't want to change their lives. Hi, Jessica, they don't want to change their lives. Most people that I know of that would turn away soul insurance to guarantee you that you will never die, I know I'm not taking no chances. I'm accepting it. I'm believing it because there's nothing in that Bible that will hurt you. There's nothing in there that could make you go wrong. It's the only thing that it does is it puts you on a right path, which is called righteous road, and it leads right to Jesus Christ. So I can never figure this out why someone would not want to take that chance. So then it dawned on me when I would talk to these girls in county, it's because you don't want to change your ways of living. When you accept the policy that Jesus Christ offers through him, you know, God offers eternal life through Jesus Christ's son, you know, a change comes over you because Jesus Christ changes lives, changes you for the better. You don't want to live your old ways. You don't want to make the choices that would not please your heavenly father. And you want to do things to bring him honor, praise, and glory every day. It's not hard. And there's some that will say, well, I could never be perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all sinners saved by grace. That's why Christ went to the cross, because God knew we would never be perfect. But at some point when people say, I believe in God, I believe in the Bible, I believe in Jesus Christ, I've accepted Christ, and you look at their walk, it happened to me, and we can all slip. And you look at their walk, and you see how they're walking every day, and you see how they're talking. If you are not being a light for Jesus Christ, and people do not see a change in you, I would have to question your salvation. I'm not your judge, but I would question your salvation. So I will say this. Soul insurance is free. And I was so passionate about sharing this with the girls that when they would say to me, well, 
Miss Fow, how do I get how do I get this soul insurance? And I would tell them, you know, John three sixteen, you know, says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and it takes you to romans 10 uh, 9 10 10 and 10 13 that if you confess with your mouth jesus is lord and god raised him from the dead you will be saved and romans 10 13 says all who call upon the name of the lord shall be saved it's that simple but then people say well it's so hard to live a christian life no it's not it's not hard it really isn't because we're not perfect people. We never will be until we're with our Lord and Savior. But at least you're getting your soul insurance and it don't cost you anything. It costs you your heart. It costs you of changing your ways and, and wanting to, you know, live more like Christ. Because God says we are to try to conform and, and try to become more Christ-like in our walk. So it was very important for me to share this because soul insurance is free. And it bothers me to think that anybody out there would not want it. But that's those that are rejecting Jesus Christ. And I feel so sorry for those people that do because my soul is worth everything. It's worth the blood of Jesus Christ. He hung on a cross for me. Now, we'll have to agree to disagree. You have a lot of people out there that don't believe. Hi, Kath. I love you. You have a lot of people out there that don't believe. And it's a shame because they have no hope. You've heard this saying, oh, you only live once. No, you don't. My grandmother always used to look at me and say, no, you don't, Valerie. Your life after here depends on how you live and your walk with Jesus Christ. But you and your works can't make your way to heaven. You can't try to get to heaven. You can't try to be better today. You can't try to be good. It just happens because you can't top the crucifixion. That's what Christ did. He gave his all to give us everything because he knew we could not come before his father because we're just, you know, we're sinners. So you like that shirt, Kath? Yes, it says, be still and know. Psalm 4610, be still and know that I am God. So it was very important to me to share this video tonight about soul insurance. It's free. And if you've never, and it's so important to me when I would talk to these girls, I would always end with, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. And I will say that it's even more so now with everything that's going on do it now don't wait you're not promised tomorrow and with the study of revelation you know with some of the horses the black horse of famine it says how there will be things that will be scarce food will be scarce things won't be able to be found and I truly believe that we are in the age of grace and we are in the end times. I'm not saying that it's tomorrow. I'm just saying I just, I just feel it. And what a day that will be for those that are still here to see the second coming of Jesus Christ. Um, the rapture of the church, I'm gone. I'm out of here. And it's very important to me because, hi, John, my friend. Hi, Michael. I, I saw John tonight. He, he got some mass from me. Um, so it's very important to me to share this because every soul is important. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you've done in life, there's so many out there, including myself, that you got my train of thought there, John. You go, girl. There's so many out there that I've talked to and I've heard, but you know, I've done so much wrong in my past. I have so many regrets look at me. If you want me to start with all that I've done and every decision I've made and the lives that I've hurt, the lives that I almost destroyed, I can keep going. I wouldn't even want to live anymore. But then I'm reminded every day then I'm a child of the Most High God, and so are you. 
And as soon as I close my eyes and I think of God putting his son on that cross, he did that just for me. He did that just for you. It just makes you know it doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter. If you go to the Lord and you repent, he forgives you. You move on. You learn from it. It should make you better, not bitter. It should make you stronger, not weaker. And it's something that I pray that everybody comes to grips with. And that's why if anybody has any questions out there, you know you can always get me on Facebook Messenger because you don't, you can't do better until you know better. And there are so many that, you know, like I said, say they believe in the Bible, they believe in God, they believe in Jesus, but so does the devil. If you're not living it, God knows your heart. I'm no judge. Nobody is. But God is the one that knows your heart. And I always say, the, uh, you know, the words that proceed from the mouth paint a picture of the heart. But don't think that you're way too far gone that Christ can't redeem your life because he can. Because if he can redeem mine, he can redeem anybody. And... I know that he can, and I'm here as proof to show you, you know, what God can do in your life when you are obedient and you want to live for him and you get rid of the meism and you say you're all about the Lord. I have to share this because Matthew 28, 18 and 20, 19 and 20 is the Great Commission. It's not a command that Jesus gave to be considered. It was a command to be obeyed when he said, go into all of the world baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and share the gospel is what he was saying. Tell everybody about me. Are you? You may say you're a Christian. You can even wear a cross. But are you sharing the gospel with people? Are you telling other people that are so lost that they don't have no time for God? They have no time at all. But you know, Jesus said, you deny me in front of men on earth. I will deny you in front of my Father in heaven. I don't want that to happen to anybody. And I care so much about people. And I just love people so much that I have the love of God. I know I have the love of Christ in me. And that's what I want to do is to let everybody know you're not too far gone. And soul insurance is free. And I do hope that if you have never ever bowed your head and went to God and said, Lord, please forgive me. That's all you have to say. You know, when Christ was on that cross and the two thieves were on either side of him in the Bible, you know, the one thief was mocking him. But the other thief said, you know, do you not fear God? The one thief knew he was the son of God. And that thief looked at him and said, please don't forget about me. And Christ looked at him and said, today you shall be with me in paradise. Even the thief on the cross. Now, I'm not saying to wait till you're laying in a bed dying, okay? If you don't, but because you don't know when your time is. But it just goes to show that that thief on the cross knew he was going to die. And Christ right there forgave him and took him and said, you're going to be with me in paradise. What? What a gift. And it was free. Christ offers it now, and it's free. Remember, soul insurance is free. Why wouldn't anybody want it? So nobody is too far gone from the love of God, no matter what you've done in life. And it's important to me to get this out there because you've many of you have seen maybe the statement, Wagware 23. I'm just going to share a little bit. Um, Wagware 23 has to do with the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18, 19, and 20. The slogan is, if you believe it, then promote it. This is promoting it. Be still and know. Be still and know. Because our clothes say a lot about us. And sometimes we don't have to say anything at all. And somebody could have a shirt, a shirt on that says John 3.16 or the name Jesus on the back of their shirt. And let me tell you, there's power in the name of Jesus. 
There is so much power. You don't know who is standing where, what they may be going through, and all they have to do is look at that shirt, and it could change a life. You can be silent, but words are so powerful. They're so powerful. They can tear you down or build you up. So that's a little on Wagware 23. And what Wagware stands for is Word of God Wear. And 23 is my number, but it is the five, uh, the four numbers of the Bible, three, five, seven, and eight. I will be having a domain soon. And there's, um, there's going to be a lot happening with that. So, and I hope you will support it. And we'll see what happens because the slogan is, if you believe it, promote it. And <clears throat> don't wait for that. You can still promote it in little ways. You don't have to be a Bible teacher. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an evangelist. You know, it's just kindness can change a life. And I know because of sitting in jail and in prison with girls that needed the love of God so bad because they just thought their worth was needles in their arms and going back and forth to jail. And I can tell you there's many that are on my account and they know who they are. I give a shout out that have been clean for so many years. And I sat with every one of them and talked to them every day. And it was the best talk I could have had with every one of them. And I'm giving that talk to you out there for any one of you that feel that you're too far gone. Don't. Accept Jesus Christ today. It is so easy. The invitation, I want to give that invitation so that you know how to do that. You just bow your head and you say, Lord, I am a sinner. I know that I am a sinner. I ask that you forgive me. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross. He was crucified. He was buried. And he was, he, he was risen the third day. And he's coming back again to receive me unto himself. And just say, Lord, come into my life. I want to live for you. That's basically an invitation to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's so easy. It's between you and God. You don't have to do it at church. You don't have to walk down nowhere. You can just go to bed tonight, bow your head. If you want to know for sure where you're going when you die, if you believe on the Son, God's Son, Jesus Christ, if you do, and if you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, just do it tonight when you go to bed. Because you are guaranteed that when you take your last breath, you will go through that curtain and into the arms of Jesus Christ. It's his promise, and God does not lie. God does not lie. So the last thing that I want to leave with you, because it is 922 already. Boy, that 20 minutes went fast. And I have to say, my jaw's hurting right here, but I think it's because my ponytail's too tight. You know, if you do a, po a really tight ponytail on your head, Watch. It's like an instant facelift. Do you see? Like, well, just, well, I'm just saying, you know, it is really tight, but it does. It like, it lifts the eyebrow. Just something I can let you guys know that are over 50. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, so with that said, I also want to share with you what I also would say to them. And I made this up and it's probably going to be in my book, of course, with my great angel friend that everybody will soon know about it sometime. As of right now, I do have somebody that is going to help me with the book. The book is probably going to be called Black and White. It's um, uh, a story about God, faith, and friendship and all that God did in my life when I was away. It, it will be an awesome, uplifting book for everybody and especially anybody that's been to jail or prison, so on and so forth. But what I used to say to the girls all the time is, and I'm going to try not to get emotional on this part. There was a lot of girls that when they would get ready to leave, because you have to remember, I sat there for almost four years. So there were some girls that were in and out, in and out, in and out. And when the girls would come in, I never said, oh, you're here again. I never did that to them. I did have one girl look at me and say, Miss Val, you're still here. And I looked down and I said, you're back again? I said, I haven't left yet. I said, but when I do leave, I'm not coming back. Only if it's to talk to the girls. That's what I say. But anyway, I would look at them and they would be getting ready to leave. And they'd say, Miss Fowl, I wish I could take you with me. And I remember many times I would just try to stay strong. You know, I'd just be sitting like this and sometimes a tear would just come down. I'd be like, it's okay. When God's ready to take me home, he'll take me home. 
But when you leave here, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. And I started doing this with every one of them that I would talk to. And there was probably a thousand or more, uh, seriously. I would look at them and say, remember, when you walk out of here, and this goes to every one of you, wherever you go, make sure when you walk out, you don't make a left on Lucifer Lane because it only leads to Sin Street and Devil Drive. Make sure when you go out of here, you make a right turn on Righteous Road. Stay on Righteous Road. You'll have some bumps. You'll have some hairpin turns. But you know what? Righteous Road leads down right into Heaven's Highway. Stay on it. Don't get off of it. Keep going straight. Because at some point, Heaven's Highway ends right into the arms of Jesus Christ. And then you'll know you made it home. I hope you like that. I hope you like this video tonight too. And please, if you know of anybody that needs God's love or needs some kindness in their life or needs to know the truth and needs to know their worth, share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Jesus Christ hung on that cross and shed his blood for every one of us. If you've never seen the movie, The Passion of Christ, try to watch it. I had to turn my head many times. And just so you know, that movie doesn't even, that movie shows a lot. But most men never would have made it to the cross because that scourging that they did would have ripped their insides out and they would have died of blood loss before getting to the cross. It's a proven fact. I read it and I studied it. But Jesus Christ, the devil wasn't going to, you know, he tried to keep him from the cross, but God prepared him a body to be able to take all that. He was ripped to shreds, ripped to shreds, and he still made it to the cross because that was the plan for you and me. So if you ever do get to watch The Passion of the Christ, it was a lot worse than that. You can't even imagine it. You can't even imagine it. So with that said, I'm going to go. I ask that everyone um, keep everybody in prayer. Um, pray that God makes this coronavirus go out of here after a while. It will. This too shall pass. And again, if you know of anybody that needs to know their worth, share this video with them or just you share something with them. Share kindness, whatever it may be, um, because it's very important. Uh, it's just so important that people accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and know that God loves you so very, very much. God does not want any soul to perish. Not one, even anybody that's sitting in jail or even those that are sitting in prison that even have murder charges. Because guess what? We think that murder is when we take a life from this earth and it's not. Murder is when we say we hate somebody, like we hate our sister, hate our brother, hate our mother. Hate, God says, is considered murder in God's eyes. Because the only one that can kill the soul and destroy the soul is God himself. Not even we can. That's why when you take your last breath, do you know where you're going? You can. Take some of the J.C. Uh, life insurance policy here. Jesus Christ insurance companies who I work for and Jesus Christ saves lives. So I hope you like this video. I love every one of you. Hi, Bruce. How you doing? I'm working on your order. So anyway, I love every one of you. Share this video, please. And if you just came on, please watch it from the very beginning because it's very important to me that you listen to the words that I'm saying. Who cares about me? I mean, I could be over here the whole time, but I just like to be personal with everybody because God is so real. I can't tell you how real God is. God is not dead. There's a movie out there like that. God is so real. Live for him. Live for him. And I'm telling you, he will open up doors and change your life like you can never imagine. You can never imagine. I'm going to go. I have to finish these orders. I'm going to be sewing a little bit more. And remember, don't mess with me. You need it. You need a, you need a facial. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go. Everybody have a good night. And I will see you next Monday. And I will talk to them. I love you all. Bye-bye.